Welcome to the Hardy Brothers Podcast, where we talk about the paranormal, earth mysteries, and so much more. Sit back and relax and enjoy the Hardy Brothers Podcast. Hey, this is the Hardy Brothers Podcast. I'm your one of your hosts, Scott Hardy, alongside with my brother. Hey, Keith Hardy here, coming to you live. And this is episode number three. So, Hardy, you know, in September of 1961, Betty and Barney Hill, they were on their way home from vacation. They were headed home to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So what, what happened to these two lovebirds that, that made history? Well, apparently, they were the first ever uh, uh, publicized alien abduction. So they got liter. So we're talking probes and all. Well, it sounds like it. Sounds like, oh according to uh, their story, um, they saw a light off in the distance. So Barney pulls over. Um, Gets his binoculars out. Thinks he sees like a, I don't know, a cigar-shaped craft with, with people in it. And uh, But it's far away, and uh, she sees the same thing. And then he gets back in the car, and they start driving. And then all the next thing you know, uh, apparently they drove off into the woods and are abducted, are taken aboard this craft. And... She's being probed and has a needle shoved into her navel, and uh, it hurt, and, and supposedly uh, whatever did it waved his hand in front of her face, and the pain went away. And so I'd she's like some of that technology. Yeah, really, to make the pain go away, right? But mm -hmm. So she um, she's telling her version, and then uh, they, they lost uh, what was what a three hour trip ended up being seven hours they got home in the morning basically yeah. at dawn yep. and uh he, they showered for a long time uh, uh claiming they were trying to get radiation off of them or something so uh, i'm not well, sure they felt they, they felt they felt yeah they felt like uh dirty like uh something they just couldn't quite explain what happened to them yeah and they just felt icky you know so they thought hey a long shower should help and they uh, had, apparently they had repressed memories. And so they saw the craft. Betty seemed a little more excited about it than Barney. Right. He's like, oh, Betty, is this a plane? And, you know, it's just a plane or a star. And, and then he figured it out. Oh, you know, there's something's following us. And he, he you know, he realized yeah. that. So he pulled over to take a look at it. He had his binoculars because they were vacationing at Niagara Falls. So he had some binoculars with him, and he got them out, and he, he looked up there at the craft, and it, it wasn't like saucer shape more than it was, uh, he said, more like pancake, so I guess that could be saucer. But he said it, it was like Oh, I a, thought it was like cigar <coughs> shape, but... It was like a wing, almost like the V-shaped triangles, UFOs, you know, only it was a... Uh, only it was a... Uh, yeah, not quite as uh, V-shaped... He said, I'll, I'll p put a picture up here when I edit it, and I'll show everybody what he described. I think he even drew it. And then while he's looking through the binoculars, he could see, like, rows of lights and also rows of windows. And in the windows, he could see little but humanoid figures. Yeah. And he started getting Like silhouettes, out. wasn't yeah. it? Because he, he couldn't see them clearly, but... I think uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that because uh, you know he's he's at nighttime and uh, no. does he have night vision well, binoculars? The, he said uh, he said there were rows of lights. He could see it plainly because of the lights that were surrounding the windows, and then he could see inside the ship was uh, illuminated, so he he could see these guys. I think he said there was ten to twelve of them. I might be wrong on that count, and then he. He said his story was, and this is after they went through hypnotherapy because he, he couldn't remember any of this until they, they got hypnotized. 
but he said that someone on the ship started speaking to him. They called him the leader. He was the guy that orchestrated the the. Uh, uh, no, know, that's what that was Betty that that said that she. She, she dubbed, she him, ca- dubbed him the, the leader, leader, and then the examiner was the, the, uh, the, the other one, one that was probing her or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and he, he said they started, he could hear them telepathically. And it, but and it wasn't clear, though, to right? It's To him, it was... No, they told him. They said, stay right there. Don't move. We're coming to get you. Don't move. And don't worry. So, uh, a lo- I'm paraphrasing. But... Um, to our to our listening audience, if you get on YouTube and I'll try to find the links and post them in the description, get on the click on the links and you can hear their hypnotherapy sessions, which were done, you know, one at a time. So Betty couldn't hear what Barney was saying and Barney couldn't hear what Betty was saying. And uh, these uh, hypnotherapy recordings are wild because Betty or uh, Barney absolutely flips out you know he got so worried after he heard him talking telepathically he told Betty yeah we got to get to the car we got to get out of here they're coming to get us and he he was so worried he had a I think he had a 32 caliber pistol or revolver in his car he he wanted to get his gun and uh, so he, they jumped in the car. By the way, their dog, Delcy, was with them. They had a, a cute little dog. I'll post the picture here. And they had a cute little dog, Delcy, was with them. And they, they got in a car, and Barney sped off trying to get away from this thing. So And that's when they ended up in the woods, yeah. what, right? Only so they I didn't – see, they didn't recall any of it until – until they got hypnotized. And th- that's why I wonder, I, I had listened to a group of people discussing the Betty and Barney Hill abduction uh, on YouTube. I don't recall the, the group, but um, they they thought maybe because they were tired, that um, lack of sleep, a long trip, yeah, sure. you know, eating some junk food, whatever, um, th- that that maybe they were hallucinating uh, due to sleep deprivation or something. And um, that's what made them drive off in the woods and, and kind of get delusional. And, I, you know, I, I kind of tend to agree with that a little bit. I mean, because, I, I mean, they, they it happened in 61. They didn't come out until 63. Well, no, it, it was, they had told somebody the week after, actually, an Air Force major. The okay. guy from their church. Uh, now that major, was after major. Uh, no, they, there was a ma- an Air Force major came to their church for a speaking presentation. Right, and right. He's the one that suggested to them they should try the hypnotherapy. Well, she actually went to him and asked him, and he said, "You don't want to use someone like me, an amateur." Right. Yeah. You, you want, you a, want professional. a professional, and I don't know if he recommended somebody, but he did. He recommended Doctor Neil Simon. Uh, or yeah. Simon. Oh crap! Let me look it up. Simon Benjamin. No, Doctor Simon. Benjamin Simon was his name. He was a psychiatrist and a neurologist who had, who was considered very uh, prominent in the field of hypnotherapy, which was fairly new and kind of. You know, people looked at it with some skepticism. However, Dr. Simon, the reason he had a good reputation was because he was helping people from the Korean War and World War II, the soldiers with post-traumatic stress syndrome through hypnotherapy and with a large degree of success. So maybe that's why he was, uh, you know, suggested. Yeah, it could be. And... You know, I I believe that, um, you know, that that stuff can be used to help people. So I don't want to um, downplay the the hypnosis therapy, uh, but I also believe it can be um, suggestive, you know, through the questioning. And and, uh, it sounds to me like they... they, uh, they had an infatuation. I think she ha- didn't. She have a lot of books and stuff, and and, and, and she didn't have a lot. She went and uh, to the library. To the library after the incident. However, oh, she okay. was she was intrigued by they flying were, saucers yeah. and UFOs because her sister claimed to have Betty Hill's sister claimed to have had seen a UFO uh, not too long before that happened. Correct. And then her niece actually ended up working for 
Mufon. Mufon. Or something? Yeah, she's yeah. so she does I mean, all the contact in the desert. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not saying nothing happened to them and that they're just making this up, but well, what do you think? Um, I personally, I I, I think uh, it's all subjective. I think they, I think they experienced something that didn't really happen. I don't think it happened in the way that they they said it. I I, I think they truly experienced something, whether it was uh, um. What is what actually is physical meta yeah. or, or what is or hard to imagined? Think, what do you think they went through if they're not lying? If they're not lying, yeah. What do you think happened to them? Um. Okay. Do you think well they're I making? Well, I I think they I think they, uh, whatever happened when they were coming home from their vacation. This is when it happened. They were driving down what I don't know, thir- U.S. thirty-five, whatever it says. I think that um I think route 1 through Indian Head that's where they stopped I well think Well what's Twin Twin Peak Twin Mountains isn't it mm, New Twin Hampshire Mountains. somewhere yeah. around there I guess we should have our facts straight before we start babbling but um so I I think um that they were under a lot of pressure um they're uh, a mixed racial couple in the 1960s which was kind of rare. They sure. were in love. They were a good couple. He was a postal worker, and she was a, uh, a social social um, worker. Yeah, with a master's degree, by the right. way. Right, and so and both of them were college edu- they were educated. educated, intelligent people. And he was a uh, he was in the army, by the way, which, by the way, he blew. I believe his teeth were all blown out by a grenade accident. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, which is interesting because in the in the hypnotherapy sessions, um, Betty said that the examiner came in and was quite excited and started tugging on her teeth. And, and she said, why are you, you know, what are you doing? And they asked her, well, how come your teeth don't come out like like Barney's? Mm. And, and she said, he has false teeth, he has dentures. So apparently they took his teeth out. See, and, uh, you know, to our listening audience, make sure you check out those uh, hypnotist recordings. They're they're amazing. I I don't think that they were abducted by aliens personally. Okay. I mean, I really don't. Were they abducted by anybody? um, I I don't think so. (laughs) Did they have a traumatic... I, I think, think they just I think had it. They uh, I think they they Dr. Co- Simon thought that something traumatic t- did happen, happen to, him, to him, and it triggered this uh, uh, illusion of fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Now he also thought that. So before they went to to be hypnotized, and this might be a year before that. See, Betty and Barney had no memory. They they uh, what do you call that? Missing. They had f- four or five hours of missing time, and they couldn't account for it. Correct. So. She started having dreams. She had about five or six dreams but he, of, he, of what had yeah, happened yeah. to them. And she's like, she these are, you know, lucid dreams. Happened like, what, five consecutive nights? And yeah. then they just stopped. So she started talking about those dreams. And Barney, he, he was a nonsensical, uh, well, practical man. Yeah. You could tell when you listen to him talk and if you right. read the book, The Interrupted Journey, right. which was written I, I haven't read that yet but yeah, I, it's a great book I'd I like mean, to uh, so but I, I, I he, yeah and he, but was he was telling practical her, yeah, he wasn't so he didn't want to hear it yeah he didn't, didn't want to hear, hear it that's why I think uh, a lot of it uh, they experienced something uh, uh, for whatever reason they were drunk high um, sleep deprivation uh, you know it, somebody like slipped that. them a roofie a something a, and in the what 60s if, that was popular well, so maybe when they stopped what if where they were driving? I always thought this, just in case they did. What if where they were driving through, you know, those mountains and stuff? Yeah. What if there were some crazy pores? Because they got out a couple times to walk their dog. Yeah, they did. You know, I wonder because what uh, if some pores or some spores, uh, mold, and fungus? Right. You know, what if uh, they just got high as a kite yeah, and had a psychedelic? I'm not sure, but I'd have to ingest it maybe. But yeah. but. Not Probably not a far enough. fetched, but but it's an idea. Oh well, uh, there's also what uh, I mean. Natural so's gas being abducted out there. by aliens from Zeta Reticuli, right? Well, I mean, yeah. W- w- at so least we know psychedelics are real. So I'm I'm not saying I'm a non-believer, 
in um, UFOs or aliens no, or, no. or the but existence of other uh, intelligent life forms. Uh, okay. But I, I'm saying um, because, uh, unfortunately, Barney uh, only lived eight years after the experience. In 1969, he passed away from a cerebral brain hemorrhage. Um, and so now we're left with just Betty's story. And unfortunately, yeah, here's whether where it gets a little yeah, eccentric. she started to change her story a little bit, and then she wrote a book. And I think she was trying to glamorize it maybe a little bit. You know what I mean? And um, we, we or also embellish it or make it better. So that really discredits her quite a bit. Sure. And there's also the when she went to these UFO conferences, like something you'd probably do with Art Bell or you know, coast to coast AM, things like that. She'd mm -hmm. go to these conferences. Well, she started getting booed off the stage. You know, people right. weren't buying they, her bull crap. And I and and the crazy thing is, is I think those people were there um, as people who were interested in the subject, or they wouldn't be there. So sure. they they were open to the idea. And maybe I mean I, I wasn't there. I don't know, but I'm just thinking. Well, if you're going to go to a thing and you know a lady's going to speak about UFOs. And her abduction experience. So I, she must have really um, t t distorted the original mm -hmm. facts because these people probably already had knowledge of her. When she used I don't know when she wrote her book and whether they would have read yeah. it before going to see her speak. I think her niece helped her write that book, by yeah. the way. And she used to do interviews and stuff. You can watch them. I'll, s I'll see if I can find I them. I'll look I for the links in the description. Yeah. Where she would hold the little baby alien... She named it, what she named it, Georgie. Yeah, see, wh where the hell she, did that come yeah, in from? Yeah, she, and she said, this is what they looked like and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and also remember, too, Carl Sagan had a pretty neat show out around that time. I like Carl. And Carl said, you know, because remember, Betty claimed, and if our listening audience, you know, if they tune into those hi hypnotic uh, recording sessions, she claimed that they showed her a star map and that they were from the star system, Zeta Reticuli. This is what they told her. And they showed her, a, a like she said it was like a, th the way she described it, we would interpret it as a 3D holographic map. It's almost something like you'd see in Star Wars or something sure. like that. And I, which I thought, okay, that's impressive. She might, she might be onto something right there. Because mm -hmm. that, you know, Star Trek wasn't even out at that time. There wasn't a whole lot of science fiction on television, I don't think, in 61, maybe The Outer Limits. Or the Twilight Zone, but uh, she she said that you know they showed her this star map, and Carl Sagan on his show he he analyzed the star map because she drew it for some people, you know, whoever you know she was being interviewed by. There's all kinds of people she t they talked to after this happened, you know. But she drew the star map, and Carl Sagan he he pretty much debunked it, saying you know you yeah. I mean, I could d make a bunch of dots and you connect them and you, they'd probably line up with some stars. And I loved what Carl said. He said, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence for people to believe it. And they did not yeah. have any extraordinary evidence other than a pretty extraordinary story, but yet no evidence. Right. And in right. the book, Keith, in the book, The Interrupted Journey, they they make a point of telling you like her dress got torn and there were uh, uh, little circular spots that were looked like they were blasted under their car and so uh, at one point in time they said they came home a couple months after they were abducted and there were a bunch of leaves on the on the in the kitchen floor or on the kitchen table and that the dress was was sitting out you know. When I hear things like that, I'm thinking, it, no, aliens from Zeta Reticuli aren't going to come back and put a bunch of leaves on the <laughs> on the kitchen table, you know. And they're not. I I don't buy that. I think that's poppycock, you know. So I, there's some elements to the story that I just think, okay, come on, this is bizarre, you know. It's almost it just philosophically doesn't make sense to me, but. He did. The, the leader did tell her because she in the hypnotherapy sessions, she she was talking to these uh, beans and uh, which, by the way, must have spoke fairly good English. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how far away Zeta Reticuli <laughs> is, but 
God damn, well, let's, that's, that's let's, pretty impressive. Let's, uh, let's get back here. So, Well, hold on. Hold on. So she, the leader did, she said, it, well, without any evidence, because she wanted evidence. Yeah. They actually gave her yeah, a book, book right? Yeah. And but they, they took, it, took back. it back. So yeah. he, she said, well, how I'm will people believe me? Call bullshit on yeah, that. Yeah. Totally. She said, how will people believe me? You know, and he, and she says, how, you know, if I can help you. She actually told the leader that, they, she could help them with whatever they needed help understanding here on earth and humans and things like that. And he says, don't worry. If we need to, we can find you. So you, you'll you hear her say that in right. these hypnotherapy sessions. Well, so they found her because they put a bunch of leaves in their kitchen and got her dress out that she wore that night, which was all torn, which had some weird pink lubricant on it they said that was now it was pink powder it blew pink off powder, when she right. put it on the line yeah that's she right late member she oh, got it out right. and then yeah. she put it back in the closet she was gonna throw it then she threw it away and then she got it back out of the trash mm-hmm. i mean what a bunch of it just it seems up. like malarkey yeah however there is something to this story that i you know i personally think that they had that, that something ki- they had a chemical imbalance whether it was because of something they inhaled ingested or, or it was just a natural, uh, uh, where maybe it was where they lived. Maybe they had too much. Uh, maybe they uh, were fighting. I don't know. What's on the trip? You know, stuff that comes out of the ground. It sometimes creeps in your basement, and if you don't ra- Ray- ra- radon, radon gas. Radon yeah, maybe. Gas. I mean, who knows? I mean, they were on vacation, so maybe they, were, you know, maybe they, what if you know, inhaled <laughs> some sort of natural. Okay, real quick here. Um, so. Uh, when she ta- when you were talking about the zeta reticuli, uh, she drew this map, and um, a, a woman named Marjorie Fish of Oak Harbor, Ohio, read f- uh, the Fuller's book, yeah. Interrupted Journey. She was an elementary teacher, okay, and yeah. so and and, a, and an astronomer, amateur astronomer. So she she drew up uh, this map, and um, she presented it to. Um, another gentleman, uh, I think his name was Webb, and um, Thomas Webb. Yeah, and then they they agreed that uh, the map uh, maybe showed some formation of a, uh, uh, I don't know some some galaxy or something. Uh, but anyway, then then. Um, Carl Sagan uh, said no, um, that the star map was little more than a random alignment yeah. of chance points. Chance points, yeah. So he's calling bullshit. Yeah. Extraordinary. And, and, he, and he said it on an episode of Cosmos, Cosmos in 1980. Sagan demonstrated that without the lines drawn in the map, Hill, the hill map bore no resemblance to real a real life map. Star map. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Cosmos with Dr. Carl Sagan. That was his yeah. show. Yeah. Now, now, there, there's an intelligent human being right yeah. there. Um, so, um, and he believed uh, that there was life out there in, in the universe, intelligent life, because he's the one that created the gold record. Remember, with the oh picture yeah. of the, the human being. Yeah. So I, I don't. That's just a little tidbit that goes along and with I this, since he was mi- since he was uh, mentioned. Uh, for Voyager, he he created yeah. that for the Voyager, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah, it's still out there somewhere, and, they, they and, and the I don't know. They put a the Beatles s- uh, song, a couple Beatles songs on there. Yeah, and, and there are several languages. Can't blame them for that. Of course, you know, one uh, nobody's going to know how to, y- you know, get that information off there probably. But anyway, well, maybe the the Zeta Reticulans picked that up and thought, hey, here's a, let's go get some samples. Well, Chloe, you know, here's here's what I'm interested in, and here's my take on it. I think they were abducted, and I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going to tell you what old, old Hardy thinks, little Hardy thinks here, and that is Barney described these beings as dressed in a glossy black, and they had hats and capes. I'd Sounds say, like the Nazis to me. Yeah, and that's little what he bastards. said. They looked like, he said, quote, they looked like Nazis. So, uh, oh, I can't remember her name. She was on Rogan's show a while, a couple of years ago, talking about how the Russians were 
they're the ones that were behind Roswell and they they experimented human experimentation because of the you know the paperclip Nazis that they they had so they were turning kids into these little you know experiment with DNA or whatever what if and we know the Nazis were interested in Antarctica what if they made it down there, discovered some of the lost technologies and ships and what's not, what not that, that used to be the continent of Atlantis? And what if they were flying around trying to, you know, figure out how to clone humans or experiment with humans? What if Betty and Barney were actually abducted by people who had already experimented with certain, you know, like like what this woman said on Rogan, oh, Ann, Annie something, Annie Jacobson, I think. She wrote the book Area 51 and, and a couple other really cool books, uh, Phenomenon, about the MK Ultra program and the remote viewing. Annie Jacobson, that's her name. Uh, I kind of was thinking about this. I'm like, what if she's right? You know, I mean, that woman's done some research. I, I don't know but if she's right, but... What if they were abducted by a faction of neo-Nazi types that had discovered technology from another world or another dimension well, and were trying to do cloning? Exp they needed, you know, sperm or and they eggs. Picked, and, and they picked Betty and Barney you know, Hill? Sure, because they, the Air Force did say when, when, when they talked to the Air Force the week of their abduction, uh, the, the guy told them that, their radars did pick something up in that area, so that was confirmed by the Air Force that there was uh, yeah, they radar didn't say activity. What it was? It was no, I mean, it was uh, been an airplane. Yeah. Helica, I mean, but there was radar activity in the area that they yeah. said they were abducted that night. He uh, did admit that. Also, they did forward the story to uh, Pro for Project Blue Book was going on at that time, and I think they forwarded the story. I think on it is to uh, yeah. whoever was in charge of that, but um, it never heard anything back. And they also deny sure everything sure. Uh, shortly after that. So, uh, you know, I I just uh, they and the weird thing too, Keith. They said that they could hear when they after they saw the craft and they're 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 driving away from it. They mm -hmm. could hear they could hear this strange uh, beeping. That was coming from yeah. There was like an energy or a frequency. It, a frequency that's that that coming from. It, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then remember when she said she when when the, the examiner stuck that needle in her navel, she was in great pain, and and then uh, the leader waved his hand over her face, and she didn't feel any pain. Mm -hmm. What if these whoever this is, what if they got technology that can just kind of put people in a subdued state of consciousness? You know. Well. Uh, through vibrations all and things. Because they, they said the beeping, they, they could hear the beeps, mm -hmm. and, and then they'd feel the car vibrate. Every time they heard, like, is a... Well, it was a probably his goddamn seatbelt thing going, beep, 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 well, beep, yeah. buckle up. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know if they had technology like that back <laughs> then, but because you didn't have to wear your seatbelts in 1961. But I, I, I just, I think... Um, I, I don't think that, that they were abducted. There's two... First of all, it's it's too suspicious that her her niece grew up and is a he, a he, not head of MUFON, but she's uh, definitely involved involved with MUFON as a and as you, you one can of the see her on Ancient Aliens. It, yeah, you can hear yeah. her on Coast to Coast AM. I mean, hey, I like like a lot of people out there. I want to believe you and I and our neighbor neighborhood friend David Bowen, and back in 1984, uh, when the Triangle Silent Triangle Crafts were uh, start starting to, to become a phenomenon. Yeah, we saw one huh, right yeah. over the. Remember that uh, Elm Street in North oh, Webster, yeah. Indiana, right over the Ball Diamond, and we it's were like, beautiful night. We, we, yeah, we we were just playing, and then one of us looked up and said, "What the what hell is, is that?" that? I and mean, yeah, we were just you, kids. Man, you, me, and Dave were just glued and to we the just sky. yeah, and it but it was silent, yeah, and so man. you know that's a, who's going to believe that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, extraordinary claims yeah. require well, extraordinary evidence. Now, when they had the lights over um, uh, with the governor, yeah, with the governor, uh -huh. so yeah, we're well, getting that's, and then that's they some said pretty extraordinary th evidence that was there, evidence though. there because multiple people, multiple states, 
and a U.S. sitting governor. Uh, so that was interesting. But anyway, um, I, I'm going to have to call uh, BS on Betty and Barney Hill's abduction. I think s something, they experienced something. I don't believe it was alien related. Okay. Well, my take on it is they were abducted by a faction of neo-Nazis who came across advanced technology from at Antarctica. And, of course, we'll talk about that in another podcast. Were they in the Die Glocke? Yeah, and uh, they... The, uh, the Wunderwaff, as these, the Germans uh, yeah, say. The Wunder, the yeah, Wunderwaff. Wunderwaff. They, were, <laughs> they were abducted and experimented with to extract, you know, the typical reproduction, you know, stuff to create, you know, clones or work on human DNA. Well, it's an extension of the the Nazi, uh, the war crimes that they committed against sure. the the Jews when they w did their... The, the, uh, Dr. Science. Mengele and yeah. all them assholes at yeah. Auschwitz and other places. That's right. exactly what it is, only they... So, you, these guys so you're, were, you're thinking that that's they were a continuation of that. Yeah. Okay. I think Barney said it best when he said they look like Nazis, and then when he described their capes... I mean, these guys got some style, you know. And then we know yeah. the Nazis. I, the Nazis I have to give them some credit. War capes, they, they, they had some yeah. cool outfits for a bunch of assholes. <laughs> they had some style when it came to their dress. So these these Zeta Reticulans, they <laughs> Zeta Reticulans, they they have some style. So that's my take on it. Of course, we'll talk about uh, advanced technology from the continent of Antarctica on another podcast. So any, anything else, Hardy? No, I'm. Um you know, I, I, I feel like um, we need a little more information on this one. Uh, I think we got the, the basis out, though, that they were abducted and, and kind of what they went through. And we, we have... Uh, and this I, was I, the I first... And this was the first ever publicized yeah. alien abduction, 1961. And so, but, um, yeah, that, that's all I have. I, I think... Um, all in all, there's enough uh, information out there. People can come to their own conclusions. You you believe that it was uh, uh, Nazis and a continuation of uh, uh, of the Third Reich, the Third and Reich, and trying to experimenting uh, with human race. reproduction mm -hmm. in the master race, and and I think it's uh, bullshit. All right. <laughs> well, no, I, I you yeah. know I and I I tend to agree with Carl Sagan. I yeah. I need to see that extraordinary evidence. This is in just this my case, own. I don't. Think Thoughts it's there, there's not enough. Yeah. There's none there. Yeah. You, you are correct. And okay. friends, let us know what you think. Leave us a comment, please, and let us know how we're doing. We'd love to hear from you on the Hardy Brothers podcast. And we want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and checking out episode three, the Betty and Barney Hill story on the Hardy Brothers podcast. We'll we'll see you next time. All right, Hardy out. <laughs>